If you all can hear us, uh, comment down below. Let, Let us, us know, know we... you're here. Yeah. For the steaks with my secret peppercorn sauce, which is going to be a completely different technique than I've seen anybody else use to make sauces in the keto and carnivore world. And I'm going to do some chicken thighs just to up our protein as well tonight. So awesome. it's going to be a good one. And there's bacon involved, so you know it's going to be good. Who doesn't love bacon? Um, <clears throat> give me a second here, babe. It's not yep. letting me pull that up from there. Let me go to your channel. Okay. Um, if y'all can hear us, uh, do me a favor and just uh, comment so I know that it's working. Yeah, let us know um, you're here. Let us know oh. you're here and let us know we're here. Yeah, make sure we're not just talking to nobody here. That's right. Uh, oh, standing I think we got a, it. I think we're on. Standing having a conversation amongst ourselves. <laughs> For like an hour. <laughs> it's just you and I. <laughs> being like, Boy, well, there's not very much interaction today. Be like, wow, no one really tuned in this week. <clears throat> oh, that's funny. Okay, we're definitely live. People can see and hear us. Yeah, there we uh, go. We got Frank in the house. He Hello, says, Frank. Hello, folks. Um... Janelle says, I'm ready for that awesome sauce and, of course, the steak. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bonita, hello, Chris and Ash. Just made your hamburger patties, and they were great. This is uh, this is the way from now on. All right. That's what I'm talking about right there. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's easy to customize that one, too. Yeah. Um, Rankin Cook is in the house. There he is. Hey, Randy. Uh, says, good evening, Chris, Ash, Mel, and those <clears throat> waiting for the live stream. Looking forward to tonight's live stream. Hi right. from Salem, Oregon. Uh Rankin Cook also said, question, mm -hmm. Chris, is the trailer a new addition to preview before your live stream? Yeah, that's uh, so I just uh, I was on the computer today. I had my lunch break at work. I was getting this set up to let everybody know um, that the live stream was happening and putting on what I was going to do, whatever. And I I've, I've, guess I've never set one of these up where I've actually looked at it on the computer. And I saw this option for a trailer, and I realized I put that trailer on my channel as like a preview trailer for anyone who's new to my channel, it, then when they pop on to the Chris Cooking National YouTube channel, it plays that automatically so they kind of know who I am and what they've stumbled into. And I thought, well, that makes perfect sense. I'll just put that before my live streams as well. In case a random person pops into my live stream, they should be able to see the trailer as well and oh, know nice. what they're getting into and why they're here. So yeah. That's, so that's awesome. That's a brand new thing. Glad that that's working for you guys. Hope you like that. And some of the little clips of some of my old videos, my new videos, a little bit of Nashville in there. Yeah. Well, Lynn is here, 22Q <clears throat> Cat. Yeah, there's Lynn. She, she said nice trailer at the All beginning. Right. Thank um, you. Mark says, howdy from Hickory, North Carolina. So glad I finally caught a live stream at the yeah, start. Yeah, your weight loss is inspiring and your recipes have helped me add a lot of variety to my own eating plan. Oh, thank you so much, Mark. Man, we're so glad you're here. Yeah. And we got... Southern Keto in the house. There he is. What's up, Victor? We got Maggie, the substitute teacher. Hey, Maggie. We there love we go. Maggie. Yeah, yeah, she did. Uh, she did my maple sugar as a, a live stream the other day. I saw, and I wasn't able to tune into it live, so I wasn't able to, to partake in the fun live. But I did catch it afterwards. She did a great job and used that to make some incredible looking fried apples, which uh, are not on our way of eating, but work great for her, and that's a great use for that, uh, they looked, that maple sugar made with the allulose. They look delicious, though, yeah. so y'all gonna show Maggie some love. For sure, Maggie, the substitute teacher, she does all kinds of different cool things with, like, recipes that deal with different dietary needs, and she's awesome. Uh, Don Smith says, Montana checking in. Yeah. Just pulling a batch of your carnivore burger buns to have for dinner. Yeah, there Come we go. Come on now. We got lots of people watching. <clears throat> and Rand can cook. Uh, Kanoi is just the sweetest. He just gave you a, a $50 uh, super thing. So. Randy, you, sir, are just, I, I feel like he single-handedly is like helping support this channel on a weekly basis at this he point. Is He's very kind. He is just the sweetest and most wonderful man and a great friend. And uh, he also regularly sends me uh, like Facebook messages with pictures of the various things that he is making, whether he gets great steaks or, you know, where he makes one of my recipes, whatever. He's, he's just a really cool guy who's out there doing the real thing, like being a carnivore and cooking the stuff. So I love it. I, I love those messages, Randy. He just uh, commented. He said, Chris, the super chat is from my wife, Eva. She enjoys your videos and live stream. Thank you. Eva, hello. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this. You guys just, you're so special and, and such a, an important part of our Chris Cook and Nashville family. So... You guys are awesome. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna get started on a couple of things here, but if you guys have questions, drop them in the chat down below. Ash is going to do her best to monitor that. We'll get to as many as we can. It can be questions about what I'm doing tonight, 
carnivore, keto in general, any kind of cooking stuff, things that aren't even keto carnivore related. If you want to talk about music, you want to talk about our personal lives, you want to talk about the dog, doesn't matter. It is a it is an open book opportunity here. And we're gonna have some really, really cool fun with some steaks and chicken thighs. I'm really excited to show you guys this sauce that I'm making tonight. <laughs> and we're gonna get started on that in just a minute. But before we do, if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up that is down below the video. Let YouTube know this is an important video. And if you have some social media or you wouldn't mind sharing it, you can click the share button, do that, text it to a friend, whatever you wanna do. And let us know in the comments you're here if you haven't already so that we know you guys are watching. I love you guys so much and I just enjoy doing this every week. We're gonna get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my air fryer preheating because I'm gonna do the chicken thighs, just make them super easy tonight. We're going to preheat the air fryer on maximum temperature. That is a four minute automatic preheat cycle. And that's just gonna give us a little bit of a crust on those chicken thighs when we throw them in there. Um, Cause I'm not gonna put anything on them other than just some salt. And we're gonna let the sauce that I make really stand out on those and the steaks tonight. So over here, I have all of the basic ingredients we're gonna need. So I've got a couple of really nice New York strip steaks over here. <clears throat> I went ahead and got chicken thighs because they only had two of these I was happy with. I was gonna get us four because Ash is doing carnivore with me this month. Yeah. This is day number two, and I was gonna give her a whole bunch of steak, but they didn't have quite enough steak for us uh, that I like to look of anyway. So I went ahead and got a little package of chicken thighs as well, just to add in some more protein and fat. We've got some bacon that's gonna go into the sauce. I'll show you how that works. I've got bacon grease, which is what I'm gonna use for the chicken thighs and the steaks to cook. And then all of the sauce ingredients are over here, and this is gonna look strange, but I have eggs, and I have peppercorns, whole peppercorns, a whole bunch of them in here. That's gonna be the dominant flavor for tonight is this toasted peppercorn. I'm gonna show you how to do this cool thing with your spices. I've got a little bit of sage right here. We're gonna add just a little bit of that herby sage. And this right here is a mixture of beef broth and a little bit of cream. So we're gonna do kind of a creamy sauce, but it's not real heavy on dairy and you actually wouldn't have to use any cream. So if you want more of a gravy that's a brown style sauce, you could just use beef broth and I'm gonna show you how to do this dairy free. And it's, it's gonna look creamy, but it's not gonna taste like it has dairy in it if you do it the dairy free way. And I'll tell you how we do that as we go. We have a little bit of butter because you can't cook the eggs without some butter. So we're gonna get started on this. The air fryer is preheating over there. The chicken thighs are gonna go in that. So I'm just gonna take, steal a little bit of this bacon grease from my steaks and I'm going to just rub our chicken thighs with a little bit of bacon grease. Now these have salt on them already. <laughs> I'll probably add just a little bit more salt to them right before they go in, but we're just gonna drizzle a little bacon grease over the top. We don't need a lot because chicken thighs are already very fatty, but we need a little bit of an oil coating on the outside or a bacon grease coating or whatever you wanna use because that's gonna help these fry up in that air fryer properly. So we're just gonna drizzle a little of that. We're gonna get our hands dirty. Don't be it. afraid to get in there and massage your chicken thighs get that bacon grease on them. I mean, nothing gonna hurt anything. We're all adults here, so let's all keep it G or PG or whatever it is we need to keep it here, but oh, but I'm... massage your chicken meat. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm a bit more PG-13. <clears throat> um, you got lots of people tuning in, babe. Uh, yeah. Let's see, we have uh, Sherry R, Nevada Pup. Hi, Chris, Ash, and Mel. Hi, Sherry. She's most likely lurking somewhere. Mel is lurking somewhere. <laughs> she's, she's, she's right there. She's, she's right basically there. just chilling out right now because she knows this is the beginning of cooking. If I start doing things on a cutting board with a knife or when we start getting ready to pull things out of the oven or out of a skillet or put it on plates or whatever, that's when she hears it and knows it, and that's when all of a sudden she appears. So she's lazy until it's time to eat. Yep. Um, Rebecca A says, hello from Calendar Canada. Enjoyed hello. your Sunday live with Anita last Sunday. Oh, thank you so much. I had such a blast doing that. Anita is just a very special person to us and she is to many of you as well. I know if you don't know who Anita at Ketogenic Woman is, you have got to go check out her channel. She is not only doing great content, but she's just a lovely lady. And we appreciate her so much because she's the one that actually kind of gave me the first kickstart on YouTube by featuring the gravy recipe, which is linked in the description of this video for you guys, because the sauce that I'm making is based off of the way I do that gravy recipe. So the gravy recipe is linked down below. So if you wanna see how I've been doing this for a long time, uh, you can go and check that out and kind of see where the idea for this sauce recipe came from. Also linked down there is the way I did a keto 
uh, green bean casserole by making a sort of a in-between a sauce and a gravy with the exact same technique. So this is the third recipe now that I'm using this kind of gravy sort of technique for, but in a different way. The egg pudding is linked down below. That keto green bean casserole is there. My gravy is all down there. So really cool. This is all kind of born from that initial gravy and then the egg pudding idea that came from that. All right, so the air fryer is preheated. This is hot. <laughs> we're just gonna take our chicken thighs and we're gonna lay them in with that bacon grease. Hear the sizzle. Hear the sizzle. If you don't hear the sizzle, it's not preheated. Which granted on an air fryer, you don't really have to worry about that so much because it takes care of the preheating for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna get them all laying in there kind of as flat as I can. Just that way they have some contact with the air fryer. It'll just help them crisp up and brown a little bit. And then it's gonna go into the air fryer. And we're gonna do three, 380 to 390. And we're gonna start with 12 minutes. I will check them halfway through, see how they're doing. And if I need to adjust it a little bit more just to get them cooked through, I totally can. But I don't wanna overcook them. Definitely don't wanna undercook them because it's chicken. But I don't wanna overcook them and dry them out either. Um, Southern Keto has a question. Yeah. Says, uh, Kristen Ash, what are y'all's favorite cuts of steak? Oh, okay. Um, so I'll go first. I guess my, for like a, for like a big honking, I'm hungry steak, I love ribeye. And I actually love sirloin. Even though it's much lower in fat, I love the flavor of sirloin and I can add a whole bunch of butter on top of it. Um, if I want to be a little fancier and I have other things to go with it, I really love filet mignon. And then if you want to get into some of the more unusual cuts, I really enjoy Denver steaks, which come from near the chuck. And I really like prime rib. Um, it's not really a, re a weird cut, but that's definitely a more expensive one that I don't get very often. Um, I also enjoy things like skirt steak um, or some of, some of the more unusual cuts that a lot of us don't necessarily see in the store on a regular basis. There's some really good ones. What about you, honey? Any and all of them. Any and all of them? Just if beef? If it's a just, steak, just if red it's beef, meat? I just, I dig it. I'm just all red about meat, it. huh? I'm all about it, okay. uh, especially when Chris makes it at home. He, it doesn't matter what cut of meat, he always just makes the best. Uh, blessed to be married to someone that cooks like he does, so I enjoy it. Um, Lynette Bun Bun says, hello, Chris. I love the fact that you sent me the pan link for your pasta, and I will be purchasing that pan soon. Yeah, that is an awesome pan. Makes things a lot easier, and uh, I'm so glad that I was able to show you where that's at. So um, right now I have a dry skillet on a medium to medium high heat. I have this up on medium high because this is a small burner. So I want a little bit more oomph out of it. Obviously there must be a little bit of bacon grease still on it, but that's all right, we're gonna let it smoke. And the peppercorns are gonna go in. So this is something you can do with your spices. It makes a big difference. If you toast your spices in a dry pan, you are going to open up more flavor compounds in them. So if you buy whole dry spices like this and toast them in a pan, you will get something more from them than if you just grind them as they come. So I'm going to toast the black peppercorns. I've also got this smaller skillet preheating. We're gonna scramble up some eggs because that's gonna be the base that adds a whole bunch of extra fat and protein into our sauce. <laughs> Which if you've seen my egg pudding, or my green bean casserole, you will recognize this as that technique. Yeah. Uh, Jenna says, love, love, love the savory egg pudding. Make it weekly, good with ground beef, steak, chicken, or just by itself. Chocolate mm. is fantastic too. It is, I love that savory pudding so, so, so much, and it got me through having my teeth taken out. So uh, I really was, <laughs> I was really digging it then when I was hungry. and didn't want to have to chew anything for sure. Yeah, I know my brother uh, who's on standard American diet still talks about the pudding that you made for him when he Yep, got I made the chocolate teeth. one for him. He thinks it's just the greatest dessert ever. He literally was telling people on Easter, we were over at his house, uh, him and his fiance, we were over at their new house that they just got for when they get married. And we were over there, he was telling people that even having like dessert in a Michelin star restaurant he used to work in. He says that chocolate pudding is still his absolute favorite chocolate pudding or any kind of chocolate style dessert like that that he's ever had. 
which I think is funny as all get out because he had no idea what it was made out of when I gave it to him the first time. But he knows how I cook, and he was like, uh, I don't know about this. Am I, am I going to like this? And I was like, yeah, I think you will. Sure enough, here we are. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to scramble up three eggs in plenty of butter. I probably used two tablespoons of butter because nobody likes unflavored eggs. That's not good. And I'm doing these the lazy way where I am just throwing them in the pan whole and breaking them up in the pan as they cook. <clears throat> super, super simple. If you guys have questions about anything I'm doing, anything I'm gonna be doing, y'all just let me know. But we're just gonna cook these scrambled eggs up until, they don't have to be like overcooked. I don't wanna like start browning them, but I do wanna cook out a uh, majority of the moisture because we're gonna add the liquid back in ourselves and cooking them just a little bit more takes more of the egg flavor out. Sweet. Um, <clears throat> really quick while you're doing that, sorry, I just, I don't wanna be rude. Yeah. Uh, I know we're here for cooking, but uh, Rankin Cook said, um, Ash, Eva and I like country music, enjoy your music. Thank you guys so much, you're so sweet. And uh, 22Q Cat Lynn, of course, was talking about an interview that I did yeah. on Guitar Guys, uh, Guitar Dad's podcast, and was saying she listened and it was fun. Yes. Uh, so thank you so much, Lynn, for the shout out, and thank you for listening, you're sweet. Absolutely. Um, if so you guys don't know, Ash is a country artist, and ashtaylor.com has all of her info. You can also go look at Ash Taylor Country here on YouTube and you should totally go listen to her music. You can find stuff on Spotify. We're actually, on Friday, going into the studio to record new music for her. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So y'all definitely go make sure to check out what Ash is doing. She does such incredible stuff and I'm very proud of her. I also do it with this handsome guy, so there, there you go. Um, <clears throat> Terry Kim says, hi, Chris and Ash. So happy to finally make it into a live on time. We're happy you're here. Yes, absolutely. You're digging, digging in the cabinets? Um, yeah, I was hoping to find the smaller blender. <clears throat> oh, I think it's in the very back yeah. Um This is what happens when I forget to pull things out that I'm going to need. That's okay. Now you guys start to realize just how much gear I actually have yeah, to we do play, this. Yeah, we, we play a lot of puzzles in these cabinets. Um, Vincent says, hey, Chris, start on those carnivore Oreos yet. <laughs> I, I wish. If you could come up with a carnivore I sure Oreo. wish that I could. Yeah. I'd love to figure that one out. Absolutely. Okay, well, I'm not seeing this, so I think we're going to have to make the big one work. I don't know where it got moved to. <clears throat> Crystal Harris says, love bacon grease. Amen to that. Absolutely. Um, I would look. I'm sorry, babe, but I, no, you're I okay. don't think I can put everything down. Nope, nope, nope. You're fine. Um, Got stuff beeping. All right. So that black pepper is toasting. We can smell it now. I'm gonna go ahead and flip over my chicken thighs. And they're starting to cook up. Now I know they don't look very fancy. They don't look very good right now. That's okay. They're gonna look better. But I'm also not trying to put like some real dark crust on these because if you try to do that in an air fryer with something that doesn't have like anything on it really, you're gonna end up <clears throat> burning it or drying it up more than you are putting a, an actual brown crust on it. So that's going to be a, ve a vessel, a vehicle to carry the sauce <coughs> as far as the flavor goes. Okay, so there is our toasted black peppercorns. We're just going to put these back in. It smells so good. Oh yeah, you can definitely smell the pepper when it starts to toast. It's like black pepper, but it has a roasty kind of a thing, the same way that coffee gets a roasted flavor smell going on. Okay, so there's our black peppercorns. Keep those over here for the moment. <clears throat> awesome. Um, hey, I found it. He found it. I We're in business. Found it. Um, I'm sure you'll appreciate this comment, babe. Uh, Clarity 4 TM mm -hmm. says, Pennsylvania here. Just wanted to let you know that I'm not normally into cooking shows but yours is the best that I have found for carnivore recipes. Thank you. Oh, well, you're very kind. I'm very glad you're here. 
Um, as someone who is a total nerd about cooking shows, I love so many of them, but I take that as a huge compliment that even someone who maybe doesn't nerd out over every cooking show on the, on the planet the way that I tend to enjoys the work that I do. That means an awful lot, so thank you for that compliment and just for watching, supporting what we do. Putting eggs into a blender. Yeah. This is a Chris Cook in Nashville signature. I've That's seen right. This many a times. That's right. So scrambled eggs, while still warm, go down into the blender there. Okay. <clears throat> and then, now we're gonna start slowly. Okay. This is this is not a dump the whole thing in kind of a venture here. So I have this is about three quarters of a cup combination of cream and beef broth. It's probably just two to three tablespoons of cream. The rest is all like a beef broth, but I'm not gonna put all of that in. I'm gonna put like maybe half of that in. And then we're gonna start to blend this and we're gonna see what kind of texture we have. We're gonna add more cream or more liquid or more beef broth or whatever it is you're using as we need to. And this is something you can customize and make this any flavor you want. So we're gonna turn that up, we're gonna turn it on low and then I'm gonna to start to blend this up on high and we're gonna to try to get this liquefied. check and see what our texture is like. Yeah, so see, this is really thick right now. See how, can you see down in there how thick, yeah. how thick that is? It doesn't, it doesn't really run. It's more of a, like a thin pudding than it is an actual sauce. So we're gonna add more cream and beef broth, not all of it. It's a little bit, <clears throat> blend again. see what we got yeah that's more what I'm looking for see how that's a see how that's a sauce now okay taste test but it's a coating sauce oh, it's gonna be good. that is just stupidly good okay <clears throat> you would never know that that's made out of eggs even though it is so I'm gonna add just a little bit of that sage right on top okay and it's like probably an eighth of a teaspoon. Like you don't need a lot. Sage is pretty strong flavor. And then we're gonna get out a mortar and pestle, which if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you get one. I've got one linked down below. Uh, it's not this exact one because this exact one came from a, uh, an Asian market when I was in college. So I wouldn't even know how to get you this exact one. I don't think it probably had a label on it when I bought it but we're just gonna put the peppercorns in there and I'm just gonna push and twist. I don't wanna completely pulverize this. I just want to crush the toasted pepper. Man, you can really smell the nuttiness of those peppercorns now as you crush them apart after you've toasted them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't smell the same way as like just plain black pepper. It's not like a real strong, you know, acrid black pepper smell. It is much softer. Okay, so that's all crushed up. It is fairly coarse, which is good, but it is all crushed up. So now we're going to very carefully, I'm just gonna move this over here to make this easier. We're gonna very carefully add in all that pepper. And you do this to taste but this is kind of the main dominant spice flavor that's gonna be in this. So that's probably a good, that's a good tablespoon of black peppercorns. Okay. And we're gonna take this chopped up bacon that's been cooked over here because we're gonna need that here in a minute too. 
So we're gonna put the lid back on. I'm gonna blend that pepper in. Just like that. Let's give that a little taste, to see what we're working with. Always adjust salt and other flavors as necessary when you do these things. Never be afraid to taste it and then adjust some seasonings. Okay. Mmm. It is beautiful. Okay. That does not need any additional seasoning. I'm just gonna put the bacon strips, these little bacon chopped up cooked bacon pieces that I have here. It's just uh, maybe a quarter cup of bacon at the most. That's gonna go in there. Okay. We're just gonna blend that up real quick. Right. So there's gonna be bacon chunks for sure all through that, which is perfect. And then we can set this off over here to the side. Look at that sauce. Look how beautiful. Yum. And thick and rich and creamy this sauce is. So good. I like how you tasted it and said it was really good. Mm -hmm. And then as if it wasn't already good, you're like, let's add some bacon to it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's right. That's I right. I like this attitude. Add a little bit of bacon and it always makes it better, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Katina, O1TX, mm -hmm. howdy from Dallas. Wanted to let you know that I have learned so many cooking techniques from you. Just bought the salad shrimp yesterday and we'll be trying your manicotti recipe soon. All right. If you guys have not seen the manicotti recipe, um, I have carnivore manicotti noodles in there, and my buddy Victor at Southern Keto did that as a jam session with me, and he has his keto versions in there as well. That was a really fun video, and all of those versions, I think, look incredible. Mm. Okay, so there's our toasted peppercorn sauce, the secret. Mm. Oh, man. With the bacon added in there, there's even better... It's a little spicy because of the black pepper. Also, if you can't handle the oxalates of black pepper, you can use white peppercorns. Do the exact same thing if you can handle white pepper. It just doesn't have the hull on the outside of black pepper, but it will still work to toast it, grind it, same thing. Okay, let's check on the chicken. Let's see how this is looking over here. <clears throat> okay, those are looking pretty good. So I know they don't look particularly interesting. That's okay. All right, it's just cooked chicken thighs with some salt. There's nothing special there because the sauce is the whole point. So we're gonna put those there. I'm just gonna leave them sit in there because we're gonna blast them for like two to three minutes on the highest temperature that'll do right before serving. That's a really easy way to use your air fryer to meal prep, have everything ready to go, and the last thing you do is blast it at full temperature for like two to four, maybe five minutes, depending on what it is, right before you serve it. And it just, it keeps everything hot, comes out ready to go. Okay, so now let's get ourselves set up here and let's make some steaks. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Linda's here. She says, hi, Chris and Ash. Excited to catch another recipe. I love watching you on YouTube. Oh, thank you so much, Linda. We appreciate you being here. I appreciate you watching because if y'all don't watch, I ain't got nobody to do this for. So it makes my day to know y'all are here. Uh, your parents are watching us. Hello, well. Mom and Dad. Everybody say hi to my Mom and Dad down there in the comments if you don't mind. That is Pam and Tony from up in Indiana and the source of where I first started learning how to cook. So, cool. All right, I'm going to start preheating this pan to a medium high. Got our bacon grease over here standing by. And we got some beautiful New York strips. We're going to get cooking those in just a minute. Does anybody have any questions? Is there anything we can talk about for yeah, you guys? Yeah, there's or? actually been several comments. I don't know if you want to talk Absolutely. about Absolutely. Let's now. go for it. Uh, Basically, the next part of this, I'm just using bacon grease to cook steaks. And I have a video on how to get a good crust on a steak. So <laughs> that's awesome. It's um, nothing special here. 
a lot of people, honey, are asking about uh, like me doing the whole carnivore thing and all. Yeah. So do you want to just like fill people in on what we're doing this month? Absolutely. And, and then we Absolutely. can go into actual questions about that. Yeah. Well, I can let <coughs> Ash kind of speak for herself on some of this, but basically we've talked about for a long time her maybe trying carnivore with me just to see if she experiences any of the benefits that I do. She's been keto for a long time. That's made a huge difference in her life. But she loves veggies and we thought, well, maybe just try and see if carnivore would be something different. Would it help? Would things improve? Would she experience benefits like I do? Or is she one of those people that the veggies just make her feel really, really great and it stays that way? We've talked about it for a long time, but there's never been like a pressure of like, you need to do this. Or I'm, I've never pushed her to do this at all. Like she's happy doing keto and I'm happy that she feels great and it's not a big deal. But she was like, you know what? I would really like to try this. And we have some you know, shows and stuff coming up and it's like, maybe this will reduce some inflammation, maybe this will make you feel good, like who knows? So she decided that she's gonna do a month of carnivore. So this month of April, she's gonna be doing carnivore with me. That's why there's no veggies here tonight for her. And we are still doing like spices, sauces, dairy, that kind of stuff. It's not super clean carnivore, so carnivore police can leave. Um, <laughs> we're not trying to make her do meat salt water for the first time. Um, some people need to do that. She is not one of those people. I don't think she would be successful if I was like, hey, you gotta do meat, salt, water. So that's what we're doing the month of April and we're gonna do health vlogs. The first one comes out tomorrow of us talking about her and her carnivore journey. And we're gonna tell you all of the things that happen and exactly what's going on. She weighed herself yesterday. And so, you know, we talk a little bit about that in the health vlog. Um, so she's gonna keep track of all of her things and she's just gonna tell you guys what her experience is the whole month with us. Yeah. Um, thanks, babe. Yeah. And as far as how I'm doing on it, I'm only on day two, but I'm, yep. I'm doing pretty great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, feel totally fine. Uh, I had a whole chicken and some bacon last night and having steaks and bacon tonight yep. with chicken thighs. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's all good. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I've, I've been sick with the, like a pneumonia type thing for the past week, but I'm feeling better. Uh, I've kind of noticed, I feel like that's even helping with the inflammation of that. So yep. everything's good. So we're excited to see how it goes, but yeah. So far, so good. Yeah, no complaints. I'm very proud of her for just being willing to step up and just give it a shot and see what she thinks. Yeah. And here's the deal, we talked about this. If she tries it and she doesn't notice any difference and she doesn't want to keep doing it, that's totally fine. And if she tries it and she loves it and she wants to continue on permanently, that's cool too. Like there is no specific expectation for what this will or will not be for her. It's just about try it out, see what you think, see how you feel and do what's best for your body, which is what I recommend everyone do. Although I'm not a doctor, so I can't give you any medical advice, but that's what I would recommend anybody do. Just figure out what works best for your body, what makes you feel good and what you've done the research and talk with your doctor to decide is best for you. Awesome. Um, Gloria gave you a $10 super thanks. Oh, by Gloria, the way. thank you so much. Very kind. So, so, so much. Um, Claudia says, I hope you love carnivore ash. Good luck. I am at seven months and loving it. Make sure to measure inches before and after. Yes, rock on, by the way. That is fantastic. Everybody give them a fantastic rock on for being successful at carnivore for seven months months celebrate those kinds of things guys it makes it so much easier to keep going when you know it's good for you yeah kathleen eh says i was keto several years and felt pretty good but when i went carny three months ago i've never felt better in my life that's all awesome. inflammation gone and i've got the energy i had at age 20. i'm 66 years young wow that's awesome. rock on that is absolutely fantastic Super great. It seems like lots of people really, really enjoy that. That's um, great. Ted Hale gave you a $5 super thanks Thank well. you so much, Ted. Yeah. You guys seriously don't know how much that kind of stuff means to us, how it just keeps us going. Absolutely. Kimberly W, um, all in capital, says, OMG, you're live. Love you guys so much. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you so much for being here. We love you, and uh, we love the fact that you're here watching and just appreciate your support. Yeah. Look at those beautiful crusty steaks. Oh, they look beautiful, babe. <clears throat> uh, DJ says, I started off keto as well, and it made the move to carnivore easy. Had a glorious two-inch ribeye steak for lunch today that barely fit the plate. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking <laughs> that about. That's the kind of incredible. that's the kind of steaks we like. Heck yeah. 
That is the kind of steaks we like. I'm excited about these New York strips we got going on here tonight. Absolutely. Hey, for all the people that are just tuning in, do you just want to go over what it is we're making right Absolutely. now? Absolutely. So this is some pan-seared New York strips that I'm doing. I've got chicken thighs in the air fryer that will be finished up here in just a minute. And then the secret of the whole thing is this beautiful toasted peppercorn sauce that I made for the steaks and for the chicken thighs to be dipped in or to have it slathered on or whatever. It's uh, a technique I've been using for a long time, using scrambled eggs of all things, but uh, make sure to go back and watch how I did that, how I toasted the peppercorn. We talked about the toasting of spices and how that brings out so much more flavor. I'm telling you, toast the peppercorns, you'll never do it any other way. That's awesome. Uh, Liz Williams says, hi, so glad I caught the show. Love your show and the channel. Oh, thank you so much. We love you and we just appreciate you being here watching. <clears throat> right. Look at that absolutely beautiful crust on these steaks. Uh, Rand can cook what Alicia said. Chris, nice crust on this steak. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking <laughs> right about. Right as you said that, y'all That are on the is page. what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm <laughs> going to flip these over, kind of stand them against the edges here, and I'm going to cook that fat strip that goes around the steak. Just a little bit if I can get it to stand up. I may just have to do these by hand for a few seconds, but it just kind of helps to crisp up that, that fat along the edges there. You can eat that fat, you know, sometimes some people don't like to chew it down, I get that. Uh, but if you don't mind chewing on it just a little bit, it's really, really good. And especially if you make it crispy by doing what I'm doing right here, that makes it even better. Awesome. Uh, Marissa Garza says, I'm trying to alternate keto and ketovore April and in May, I'll try to do the carnivore. That's yeah, awesome. there, you there you go. There you go. See, this is a, a conversation that happened if uh, I did a, a live stream with Cindy DeManch and Sauna, um, Mrs. Imperfectly, per Mrs. Perfectly Imperfect Keto. Um, and you can go see that live stream and you can find both of their channels. I did this live stream with them and we, we talked about that. We talked about like, what do you do to kind of like ease your way into carnivore? Because you don't necessarily have to go full carnivore like on day one. There's no reason that you should have to do that. So if you want to, you know, do like a day a week that's carnivore and then you want to do two days a week, you know, a couple of weeks later or, you know, whatever, like, like set up a plan for yourself to transition into carnivore. If that's not something you feel like you can do just overnight, you want to alternate back and forth, set yourself up to be successful and work your way into it. That's totally fine. You don't have to go overnight and do that. And you don't have to be carnivore. You know, if you, if you feel like doing keto is the way for you and that's good for you and that makes you feel good and that's all you need, then fantastic, you can do that too. So I'm gonna finish up those chicken thighs while these steaks are resting. These are beautiful steaks. Please don't take them out and just immediately cut them because the juice will all come out. We're gonna let these rest on the plate here for three or four minutes while the chicken thighs finish up and then I'll plate up the chicken thighs and it's gonna be time to eat. So do you guys have questions? you have things you'd like to say, anything? Anything I can answer or do for you today? Yeah, RF says, down 48 pounds. Can't wait to hit the big 5-0 loss. Feeling awesome, thanks to you guys. Yes, rock on, congratulations. That's so fantastic, so proud of you for that. Awesome, uh, Truth Matter says, uh, I was late too, but my first live with these two, so welcome. Yeah, welcome, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you being here. Yeah, uh, Liz, will, Liz Williams gave you a $5 uh, super oh, chat. Oh, Liz, thank you so, so, so much. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Katina O1TX has a great, great little uh, bit of information here. Okay. Uh, for those that have a limited income like me, us too, look at the weekly grocery store ads and buy the meat they have featured has the loss leader to get you into the store. The best ways to save money. Yes, absolutely. I shop sales all the time. Ash can tell you one of the things that gets me more excited than anything is when they throw some form of ground beef on sale and I get the email notification about it and I'm like, all right, ground beef's on sale. And she's no, like, no, 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 no. How do you really react when ground beef goes on sale? I mean, I have a lot of different reactions to it, but. It's like a dance. Uh, well, yeah, there it's is. Like a, it's like a whole It's always thing. like a. Yes. yes. And yeah, usually, something like that. Usually it will be dead quiet and we'll both be on our phones. <laughs> and then he like will slam the counter and jump up and down and scare me. 
uh, because, and I'm like, what's wrong? And he's like, ground beef is on sale. And he acts like we just won the, the lotto or something. Hey, but listen, nope, when you eat as much beef. meat as I do, ground beef. ground beef being on sale, that is like winning the lotto. You're cute. You're very cute. Um, Mark has a question. Absolutely. Are, are those chicken thighs boneless? Yes, they are. <laughs> so ideally you would buy bone in, skin on, and you would do it that way. And that's, you know, th that's what I would recommend you do because then you can use the bones for bone broth and the skin has collagen and it's really good for you and you get extra fat that's under the skin. Totally all of that. Uh, I just had to think on my feet today and just come up with something to put with our steaks because they didn't have the steaks that I wanted them to have and I won't buy inferior steaks. I'm sorry, I'm just, I cook too well to, to buy a steak and feel like I wasted my money on it. So I did a sidestep and they had some boneless, skinless chicken thighs that were on a manager special that are like the sell by dates like tomorrow. So I got them for like $4, $5. So that's, that's why I did that. And it'll be lots of really good meat, but ideally you would get bone in, skin on, you know, the whole thing. Like it would be, it would definitely be a little better for you to do that. Okay. As you can see, the food is just about ready and there's the dog. <laughs> coming into the <clears throat> kitchen. <laughs> there, she's coming to check on everything. Okay, so we're just gonna do steak and some chicken. Just like that. And we have some beautiful sauce on the side, but it's always nice to just. That sauce looks so good. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. It, it really, really is. The pepperiness of this is just so perfect. But because we toasted that pepper, it is not an acrid, like overly strong pepper. It is a nutty, beautiful, slightly spicy, rich, black pepper flavor. It is absolutely unbelievably good. The toasting of the peppercorns is the secret here. It makes such a wonderful difference. I just wanna make sure you get all this sauce out of this bowl because I don't want any of this to yeah, don't waste disappear. That. No, not, not something this good. People are saying how yummy the sauce looks. It is absolutely amazing. And here's the deal, because it's made of that scrambled egg, it is one, extremely high protein filling as you know sauces go. It's super low carb. Mm, tastes amazing. And it's easy to customize because it's a very mild flavor. You would not know there's eggs in this. You can put whatever spices in this you want, but this toasted peppercorn, that is just stupid how good it is. Um, Absolutely. Greta Brunswick says, I would only be able to eat half of the steak. <laughs> yeah, that just means you have leftovers for lunch. That's, that's right, that's right. right. You just got the leftovers and you know, you just kind of go from there. And here's the thing guys, eat until you're full. Stop when you're full. If you get hungry again, eat more. That's pretty much what we're doing. And you know, I've got Ash, um, just focusing on that with the stuff that I make. Like there's, there's deviled eggs in the refrigerator right now that I made. And there is bacon strips that are pre-cooked, ready to go. And don't tell anybody this stuff's not carnivore, it's parsley. Oh gosh, the carnivore police are gonna show up Oh now. no. Ah. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not gonna get their real carnivore of the month award. Being a poser. I'm telling you. Yeah. How, how dare I put parsley on something because it looks nice, right? <laughs> Can you guys tell I'm throwing shade a little bit? <laughs> he's, he's on one today. He's on one. <laughs> I'm always on one. I got sass 24 seven. That's right, babe. That's you go for much, it. That's pretty much the deal. Okay. I know everybody likes the taste test, so yeah. I'm gonna just dive in with a little piece of the chicken and um, some sauce. You guys got questions? Drop them down there. See what it tastes like. Oh, you look happy. So good. Yeah. It's so good. Okay, let's see how I did on the steak here. We're gonna cut this baby open. Look at that. That looks really good. That <laughs> is just beautiful. And the crust on that, I can feel the crust as I cut through and then the steak inside is just super tender. Beautiful. And let's try that with that sauce on there.
Mm. Mm-hmm. Good stuff, huh? Guys, you have to try this sauce. <laughs> you can make it as thin or leave it as thick as you want. If you say, can this be made into a gravy? Yes, it can. It's just a really thick version. Or if you say, can this be made into like a really thin sauce? Yes, it's just a really thin version. Could you make a soup, like a creamy soup out of this concept? Yes, I do believe you could, right? So this is the kind of thing where it's like you take one recipe and it turns into a whole bunch of others, which is why I don't do a lot of like written out recipes when I'm doing these backstage cooking with Chris kind of things. Um, I want you guys to learn the technique. I want you to get the base concept and then I want you to go play in the kitchen and use your own spices and use your own taste buds and make this the way you want it. You want it thinner, add more beef broth. You don't want it as thin, don't add so much beef broth. Like play around with these things. In fact, if you guys understand what I'm saying and if you're here with me and you're getting all of this and you're loving this kind of stuff, put hashtag no recipe in the comments down below, right? That's what this is all about. Like recipes are great. That's a very important element of cooking, but so is using your senses, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your instinct, just being able to cook, knowing what you're doing just kind of on the fly makes you so much more confident in the kitchen. So take these ideas, play with them, see what kinds of combinations you can come up with, but man, do some of those toasted peppercorns on this sauce. I guarantee you are not gonna be sad. And you can use those toasted peppercorns just on your steak by themselves, just like pepper out of a pepper grinder. You can just sprinkle the pepper over the steak when you're cooking it. Like there's a lot of different ways to use it, but it is amazing. Awesome. Um, Carol, three, two, five, four, seven says, uh, toasting the black pepper, uh, does take the bite out of it. Really? Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. It's, there is still a little bit of spice to it. Um, like a black pepper always has, but it takes it, the thing with black pepper is it has this almost sour, acrid aftertaste. And when you get black pepper in your nose or when you eat it and it like really bites you, that's part of what it's doing. It's not just the spice. It's actually the acrid, like, you know, sort of, you know, it makes you pull back that kind of element, which to some extent, I like that. I do enjoy black pepper, but if you don't want a lot of that, or especially if you're using a lot of black pepper, like I did here, <coughs> this, when you take that bite out of it is so much better. It's so much smoother, but you still get the, the spice of the black pepper and the flavor, but it gets this nuttiness to it. That is just unbelievable. Awesome. Um, Nan wants to know, hey Chris, do you like truffle salt? Yes, I love truffle salt. So I don't cook with truffle anymore because my wife is allergic to mushrooms. I don't know if she is allergic to truffle or not because I know some people who have a mushroom allergy are and some are not. We have not had the bravery to try a little bit of something with truffle oil or truffle salt or something like that. I love truffle. I really, really do, but I also just don't want to make my lovely wife sick. So I'm very, very careful about no mushroom type stuff in the house and using no, no products that have mushroom powder or any of that kind of extract stuff in it. Um, I'm just really careful about that. So at some point in time, if she's ever feeling brave, we might try something with a little truffle, but I'm very careful with it. But I love it. I absolutely love truffle. Cool. Um, Bruce uh, said, by the way, um, he said, hey, Ash, I'm going offline. Uh, thank Chris for me. He answered my question about cooking the Kanye on Cindy and Sana's live, followed his advice, and it was amazing. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I, I remember we were getting off on the Picanha train there on that live. That was a good time, and Bruce had a great question. And uh, You guys should definitely go check out Cindy and Sana. If you don't know who they are, Cindy DeManche and Sana, which is <coughs> Melissa's perfectly imperfect keto um, on here on YouTube, they do live streams and they're just involved in the community and they just do really cool stuff. They've got great stories. They're sweet ladies and I had a really good time. The, the live stream is on my channel here, but it's also on their channels and I've linked their channels and I'm sure they would appreciate you guys going and subscribing and just kind of seeing what they're doing too. So they're, they're very lovely ladies. And in fact, I think Ash is actually going to end up doing a, a live stream with them too, talking about being a musician so. and being keto and carnivore. Yeah, I think so. That's coming up here. Mm -hmm. um, Robin Nast says, do you use tallow ever for cooking or bacon grease? Do you have any other ideas for ground beef carny style? Yeah, so I use tallow uh, from time yeah. to time. I haven't in a while, mostly just because tallow can become really expensive. Um, <coughs> buying tallow that is pre-made 
can get really expensive if you want good quality stuff. Lard is usually cheaper, so a lot of times I cook with lard. Or bacon grease is free because I'm making the bacon anyway. And so I collect all the bacon grease and we use it. But <clears throat> I love tallow. It's, it's a fantastic product. I just oftentimes don't pay for it. I would love to find a really good one I like that's not too strong, that is also not too expensive. Um, you can use whichever of those you want. As for ground beef, I actually have a number of recipes that I use ground beef for. So my burger patty recipe, if you didn't see that, um, the live stream about the burger patties, that's a fun one. It's, it's simple, but it's uh, using ground beef to do burger patties. Uh, I do a meatloaf, which I'm definitely gonna do a video of how I do my carnivore meatloaf, but I will do a meatloaf for you guys. Um, I'm also getting ready to work on a carnivore hamburger helper. Yes. This should be coming fairly soon. That's gonna be a great one to use ground beef. Uh, you can use ground beef and like a, a butter or cream-based kind of a sauce, and you could use my pasta noodles that just came out this last week. And you could, because that's a brand new carnivore pasta that you can actually twirl, you know, make spaghetti out of it and twirl. You could totally make like a creamy based ground beef meat sauce. That would be really good. Um, there's a lot of different things we can do with ground beef. And actually, if you guys didn't know, I'm going to be doing some live cooking type things like this, specifically in Dr. Barry and Nisha's tribe group, Dr. Barry's tribe. I'm a member there. Um, it's PhD community, something like that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put the link in the description for you guys, but if you want to join, it's, it's five bucks a month and it really supports some people that I think are doing amazing things in keto and carnivore to help other people. I really respect Dr. Barry and Nisha so much for the things they do to help all of us. And they asked me if I would do some live cooking stuff in there. And I said, absolutely. I would love to come in there and just offer some things. And I'm going to do some deep dives. I'm going to be talking about things like ground beef, eggs, like what are the ultimate ways we can use these ingredients, things that most people on YouTube may or may not actually care that much about, but things that a more specifically focused and dedicated group of people might be interested in. So we're going to be doing some stuff there. So if you guys aren't part of Dr. Barry's tribe, if that's something you'd be interested in supporting, if you like the work that they do, it's, it's like I said, it's five bucks a month. It's not very much. And there's a lot of great stuff that goes on in the tribe. I love my tribe members. Absolutely. Uh, lots of people seem excited about meatloaf. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, babe, before we go, do you want to talk about like the videos that just came out and what I you sure have will. coming out? Give them the whole spiel yep, on what we're I doing. I sure will. So we had the carnivore spaghetti noodles that just came out on Saturday. If you have not seen that, you can twirl them with a fork and they're fantastic. I did a keto version that Ash had, which had a tomato sauce as well made by Mr. Victor from Southern Keto, it was his marinara sauce that he actually sent me. What a what a legend, mailing me some marinara sauce for us to try. Such cool guy. So uh, I have that recipe linked in there as well. If you'd like to make your own, you can go watch his video and learn how to make that. It was great marinara. So I've got that video out. I did a keto chow ice cream recipe. It's actually a carnivore ice cream base that you can leave totally carnivore, or you can add in keto chow. I have instructions on how to do that. Any flavor keto chow you want so you can make different flavors of ice cream, and it's no churn. You don't need an ice cream machine to do it. You literally make it with a hand mixer and it goes in your freezer. It was fantastic. We used the fruity cereal, which is the brand new keto chow flavor they have out right now. It's probably not gonna be around for long, so if you guys want any of that kind of keto chow stuff, my keto chow link is down below. And even if you don't want things like their shakes, you can go get their salty packets, because that's what I drink every single day is the salty electrolytes and, mm, that's the zesty orange and it's really, really good. Um, we feel so much more just ourselves having plenty of electrolytes and of all the ones we tried, the salty is the ones that makes us feel the best. So my keto chow link is down there. There's a 10% discount code for you guys as well. So you can get a little bit of money off of that. Um, we have the health vlog coming out tomorrow where Ash and I talk about what we're doing carnivore wise for her here in the month of April. And then on Saturday, we are doing carnivore hot dog buns, and I'm doing a carnivore hot dog, a ketovore hot dog, and a keto hot dog, three different kinds, and just some ideas, but some other suggestions of different ways you can do that, how you can make these carnivore hot dog buns, and they are different than my burger buns. So if you've seen my burger bun recipe, that was one particular kind of thing. This is a different recipe. So it's gonna be really, really cool. Um, don't worry. Ash had all of that stuff before she started doing carnivore. So the keto ingredients you'll see her eating in that video is not her already going off carnivore after like a week. That is 
That is something we intentionally did before she started Carnivore. So we got that out of the way because she was really excited about doing that video. So I, I enjoy hot dogs. I Absolutely. Thoroughly, I, I love it. Absolutely. I do too. It was, those were really good too. Those they were, were delicious. So good. They were, all three of them <clears throat> were really good. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you this question really quick, babe, just yeah. because maybe we can help her out. Yeah. Um, so Maritza Garza, I, I've been seeing comments and I apologize, Maritza. I'm trying to read and run the camera and all that. So sometimes yeah, yeah. I miss things, but if I understand, I believe it's her daughter is actually allergic to some things, including like red meat. Okay. And there's some people on here that are saying like, you know, maybe red meat they can't have right now for whatever reason. Right. Maritza's question is, can you make ground meats like chicken, turkey, lamb, pork in the same way? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> you can use any meat that is ground up to use um, in, in recipes and all that kind of stuff. And the only thing you have to consider is what the water content and the fat content is going to be. So like if you cook seafood that's all ground up, it has a very high water content and the protein structure is completely different. So it turns more into a paste <coughs> than it does a ground meat. Um, pork is pretty easily interchangeable with beef in a lot of different places when it comes to ground, uh, ground meats because the protein structure and fat content are very similar. Um, if you do something like turkey or chicken, it's usually going to be lower in fat. And the same thing that you would do with venison you would have to do with things like turkey and chicken. So it's going to be lower in fat. So you need to figure out how do I add fat back into it? So you could get like chicken fat. You could get some kind of, if you can handle like pork fat, you could do, you know, like the, the pork belly or, you know, various things. You can grind other things into it. Just make sure you get it all cooked to a safe temperature. You can cook it and you can use like dairy, like I do in my beef patty recipe. You could use dairy as a way to have a filler that's also holding on to extra fat in there, those kinds of things. So there's lots of different ways you can do it. You just have to think about water content and fat content to know how it's gonna work in a recipe or when you cook it, how it's going to cook up. Make sure you don't overcook something or dry it out or that you don't over compress something to make it real hard if it's protein structure works differently than say ground beef. But you can absolutely sub them out with a little bit of tweaking. Cool, she says awesome, wonderful. Wonderful. Cool. Um, yeah, babe, unless there's anything else, I think, I okay. think that's it. People are telling us to eat while, while yeah. it's hot. Yeah, so. we're going to dig in and everybody wish Ash good congratulations on stepping into carnivore for her first time and, uh, wish her luck for all of the health benefits that we, we hope that she experiences as a result of all of this. And hopefully she feels amazing and, um, we'll be reporting to you guys. My health vlog will be coming out tomorrow. Make sure to watch that. She'll be talking a little bit about what she's doing and what we're doing here with the the carnivore thing and we've got some great recipes coming make sure you like subscribe share do all of those things all my links are below if you'd like to support the channel huge shout out to my patreon and my youtube members those are the band you guys are awesome and we're going to see you guys in rehearsal really soon with some extra recipes um they just got the keto arby's sauce dupe that i had with the arby's sandwiches that i did the the no carbies knockoff for so if you guys like things like that extra sauces extra little recipes fun little things behind the scenes looks that's what my patreon and youtube members get to see and uh, they basically just keep us going with their their small donations and their kindness and that's that's how we afford to do this is them helping us out so thank you guys so much for watching all of those links are below if you need anything we're always here we love you guys and as we always say this is Chris Cook in Nashville. My lovely wife, Ash Taylor, is back there behind the camera. Guys, make sure to eat your meat just like Ash is going to this month. Love your life. And I'm going to see you right here in the kitchen for another live stream recipe. Bye. See you guys.